So let's talk a little bit, because I think that this is on, uh, in the forefront of most people's minds, is the Russian hack. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we've learned a little bit about it from the declassified report in the way that uh, there was some sort of meddling in the elections. Mm -hmm. um, some people disagree about how much there was, but there was certainly some. Uh, there were troll farms that created false news. There were email hacks and selected releases. Um, and since cybersecurity is in your portfolio, uh, and because we know that Russians have meddled in elections in Europe in the past, um, why, were we surprised by this? It seems like we were. <clears throat> so, first of all, um, great to be here. I want to thank the council and thank you, Dina, for, for doing this. And, for everyone coming out this morning. It is, uh, A, always nice to get out of Washington. B, nice to get it. You referenced my, the Warren of the White House. It's actually a windowless office in the basement of the West Wing. So um, very nice to be here. Uh, and particularly nice to be uh, in front of such a thoughtful audience, which is always my experience every time I've been to the council, whether here uh, or in Washington. So thank you. Um, were we surprised by this? I think the first question is, what's the this you're talking about, right? So um, hacking of uh, private sector uh, entities, private or public sector entities. No, I don't think we're surprised by that. We've been uh, talking about that and identifying that as, um, and cybersecurity in general is one of the biggest national security and economic security threats we face. The president said that uh, when he first took office and we've taken a number of steps to address those threats. When it comes to the question of using information operations to uh, interfere in our <coughs> democracy, um, and I think the president recently spoke to this, you know, that is something, the asymmetric tools, whether it's cyber uh, hacking, uh, cyber intrusions, information operations, those things I think um, are tactics and techniques that we're, we are going to have to come uh, to grips with increasingly uh, going forward. So I think that's an area uh, that is, has probably not been on people's radar screens as much as it should. And were you surprised by the, or was the White House surprised by the, the Russian hack on the DNC? Or that's what I mean by, by whether or not. I mean, look, we have been talking about and identifying and working on um, an, an increasingly uh, aggressive set of actors and Russia has all when it comes to cyberspace if um, to just talking about cyber threats and Russia has always been at the top of that list Russia China Iran we saw North Korea's activity obviously and with the Sony uh, attacks so no I don't think um, we're at all surprised about their capabilities we've been talking about that and identifying that as a real a threat for some time. And the Russians, I mean, sorry, the Republicans were hacked as well. Um, do we know for a fact that the, the Trump campaign was uh, affected? So uh, a few data points on this. One is the October 7th statement that the Director of National Intelligence and the Secretary of Homeland Security issued in a very, uh, frankly, an unprecedented uh, statement calling out and identifying um, the uh, Russian government directed intrusions on, at that time, it described political organizations. Mm -hmm. And so I would call to people's attention the plural there. So uh, I think, as we saw in the uh, unclassified report, that obviously you identified the DNC hack as well as some Republican infrastructure. What um, does that mean exactly? So um, infrastructure or apparatus or um, uh, businesses or uh, companies used uh, by Republican, uh, by the Republican National Committee, but not the uh, headquarters itself. I see. And certainly and what we know is we did not see the same type of release. information uh, disclosures uh, and leaks as we saw with the DNC. Which gets me to my next question, which has to do with Julian Assange. Mm -hmm. You know, he has said uh, of WikiLeaks, he says he doesn't know mm -hmm. where the docs came from or, or that they didn't come from a state actor. Do, do we know that to be true? I think that the unclassified report speaks to this, uh, um, that they cannot um, say definitively one way or another um, uh, whether or not he was witting. I think that is how, how it's Whether been, he was? Witting. Oh, I see. Oh, of witting. sources. I see. Yeah. So it could have been removed by a couple of, mm -hmm. okay. 
So um, we'll talk more. I'm sure members will have more to ask you about the hack, but I wanted to. I can't imagine. That yeah, that maybe <laughs> one or two things. Um, but I, I just wanted to get that much out. If you had a yellow sticky <laughs> above your desk, what are the three things that you came in wanting to do and did you get them done? Yeah. Um, on the cyber front, uh, I wanted to execute on a plan that said, let's apply the counterterrorism lessons that we've learned to this threat. And I think we've done that uh, in many respects. There's certainly more to do, but we have um, done a, a whole series of things to address the cyber threat by applying counterterrorism lessons learned, creating an integrated intelligence center so that policymakers have one place, as we do with terrorism, one place where that intelligence comes in and you can understand and make better judgments uh, as a result, uh, increasing uh, our, the tempo of our responses and how we deal with it in the National Security Council, employing a, a philosophy and an approach that says we're going to use all instruments of national power to combat the cyber threat just as we do with terrorism. So I think executing on a strategy that says, let's take the lessons we learned against the, uh, on the CT threat uh, and apply it to cyber, I think uh, we have made substantial strides there. So this whole question of, and your question gets at deterrence, the notion of can you have deterrence in the cyber realm as we've had in the nuclear realm, I think it's a fascinating question. There's gonna be a lot more conversation about that, whether it's because of the Russian hacking or um, uh, steps that other nation states have taken. I think you're quite right that deterrence, and actually Jim Clapper has recently talked about this, um, whether or not you can have cyber deterrence, uh, I think is, a, is an open question, precisely because you can't measure each other's stockpile. Um, what you can do, and I think we have tried mightily, particularly over the last few years, is try and build a set of international norms. Doesn't mean everyone is going to adhere to them, because that's true in the physical world as well as in the cyber realm, but it does enable nation states to isolate other nations who violate those norms. So we have undertaken, um, a, frankly, a full court press over the last few years in every multilateral forum, whether it's the UN, the G, now seven, G20, uh, to bring countries together around a set of international cyber norms, things like countries should not attack other countries' critical infrastructure in peacetime. Countries should not undertake um, intellectual property theft uh, for purposes of commercial gain for their country. So um, that set of norms, which we are trying, and I would argue the next team has got to continue uh, on those, uh, in those efforts to build a set of norms, or as the president likes to say, rules of the road around cyber, that has got to continue. So one of those cyber norms potentially could be you don't involve yourself or meddle in elections in a particular country. Yeah. So, so who's the person who's going to be in charge of that next? Do we know? Um, I, don't, I don't know that uh, there has been a definitive uh, ruling on that, so to speak, but certainly my uh, successor, I've talked to him about um, the cyber issues and that's something that I know he'll be focused on.